So the next thing I'd like to do is mock the engine up and that way I can find out if the port durations are where they're supposed to be and see if squish like looks like it's going to be correct and so on. But before I do that I do want to check the piston ring end gap. It's supposed to be 0.15 minimum up to as high as 0.35 millimeters. So I've got a six thousandth of an inch or 0.152 millimeter feeler gauge here and I'm going to see if that fits. So that seems to be a fairly snug fit but it does pass through so that should be alright. So I'm going to go ahead and put this on the piston. I'm also going to try to install one of the sir clips while I'm at it and sometimes I like to have the wrist pin in place that way I can uh, use it to stop the sir clip from going all the way through or sometimes it helps to push the sir clip into place where it needs to be. Sometimes I can get these things to go right in and sometimes they will fight me the entire way because we're about to find out. center and if you want more information on how to set up a degree wheel I've got a whole video about that as well so now if I set my degree wheel to zero piston comes all the way up to the top of the bore and if I move the wheel or move the crank either way it begins to go down the bore. Now I want to check the port durations beginning with the exhaust side and I'm going to shine this light up through the exhaust port just to make it easier for me to see when the port begins to open. I'm 
there's a top view of what I'm looking at you can see the light just barely coming across over the uh, piston crown and then if I check my degree wheel looks like it's right about on the 85 pretty close and 85 degrees there would actually be 190 degrees of exhaust duration and I'll check it going the other way and see what it says then Again, it's pretty much on that 85, which is 190. And the spec for this is supposed to be 190 degrees of exhaust duration. So at that point, I would think the transfer should be right on spec as well, as long as the cylinder's cut properly, but I'm going to check anyway. So same process. I'm going to crank this over until I see the uh, transfers beginning to open above the piston crown. There's one there. Let's see. This one is kind of tough. You can't really get light through there too well. So I usually just shine the light into the cylinder to give me a good look at it. It is setting at one, basically 115, which would be 130 degrees of transfer duration which is also on spec because top performance says this should be 190, 130 and that's what I'm getting and this is exactly as it would be set up out of the box I haven't done anything special that is the stock base gasket no mods to the cylinder or piston or anything like that so it did. they did a pretty good job of making it come out where they thought it would be which I'm not used to because I am more used to uh, Taiwan cylinders where they don't give you any specs and you really don't know what you're getting each time you buy a cylinder so this is a kind of a nice change. The other thing I want to do is to find out uh, where the squish is. So I don't need the degree wheel for this. I'm just going to go ahead and take this off. That way I don't have to worry about bending anything up. So I'm just going to set up a crisscross over the top of the piston here. Uh, that way I can check squish in four areas just to know that it's fairly accurate. And I'm using Gorilla Tape to hold this down just because it's a pretty strong kind of tape and it doesn't leave a lot of residue or if it does you can get it up fairly easily. Okay now I've just got to figure out how to set this head up which is again new to me because I've never dealt with a modular head. Being just a mock-up to check squish I'm not going to install any o-rings or anything like that i'm just going to put these together and put the head in place i'm used to only my taiwan made generic cylinder kits and with those the head will come all the way up against the uh, cylinder deck there is an o-ring in those as well but it still gets metal to metal contact and on this there's a gap all the way around so either I've done something wrong or they rely on the o-ring and don't worry about the uh, metal to metal contact here and it could be that I guess if if the o-ring works it really doesn't matter if you have an outside seal here and maybe that's done just to make sure that you get a good compression or pressure on the uh, central head, the, the cylinder head that has the combustion chamber in it. Now I'm just going to use a ratchet and a socket and rotate the engine over that way it'll crush that solder and we can see what the squish ends up being at least get a good idea of it. Okay. I can take this apart. A 
carefully remove this from the top of the piston. Hopefully you can see that it smashed the very ends of each of the pieces of solder a little bit. That looks thick to me, but the only way to find out is to measure. That's eh, not bad. 1.11 there. Try to find the spot with the smallest squish clearance. It looks like that's probably going to be about it. So I've got 1.11 there. Check this side of that. 1.11. This side, 1.12, and the last one got 1.1, well, 1.09. That is way more consistent than uh, I was expecting to see, but it is also about 0.2 millimeters above spec because the spec says. 0.9 this is basically hovering around 0.1 although it does say 0.9 plus or minus 0.1 so at that rate it would be 0.1 roughly above where they'd like to see it and I'm just going to take a look at the head and make sure I didn't do anything wrong setting it up since I did see that gap I think that's how it's supposed to be but just want to make sure I'm not sure that this will come across on camera, but this center section actually does sit proud. It sits a little higher than this outer section if you're looking at it this way. I'm going to put a straight edge across the top of this cylinder here and see if there looks like a difference in the height of these. And actually there is a difference in the height, but it's not what I expected. It looks like the center section of this is taller than the outer section. So there's actually a gap uh, between the straight edge or ruler and the outer section here. And I was expecting perhaps the opposite, or at least it to be flat. Since the center section of the head and the center section of the bore both sit proud relative to their outer sections, I have to assume what they're trying to do is to make sure that you get plenty of clamping force in the center area where all the combustion pressure is and rely more on the large o-ring on the outer edge for just sealing the coolant off so control the pressure better with more force on that sealing area right around the head and not worry so much about this outer area